Hey guys, Jim Halterman from TV Guide Magazine and TV Insider. I'm here with Tracy Bregman, who's, I can't believe it's been 40 years. How's that possible? I can't believe it's been 40 <laughs> years as well. Hi, Jim. <laughs> I hope you're satisfied. Satisfied. I am sick. I am sick to my stomach. After the day I've had today, I don't give a damn how you feel. Oh, that is just perfect, Lauren. Have you ever cared about anybody but yourself? What Lauren wants, what Lauren needs. You are nothing but a common tramp. I don't need to take this, not from you. It's amazing though, but you know, I remember those early days and my memory, tell me if I'm wrong, Lauren wasn't the nice girl back in those days. Um, okay. she, she had some mani manipulative ways. Yes, what do you I remember about those early days when you first started playing her? Well, I was like the original mean girl. But what was interesting is they did not hire me to play the mean girl. Um, my character, Lauren, didn't even have a last name, was Tracy Abbott's best friend who had just lost her virginity. And they uh, were kind of talking about that. And it wasn't until Beth and I had this scene in the coffee house and Bill Bell said that I went to exit and I turned back and looked at Beth. Now, what you have to know in real life, Beth and I were like instant best friends. So I don't know what that look is that he saw, but he saw what he could create as Lauren Fenmore, the mean girl. And that's how it was born from that one look. So you were not signed on to be on for years and years and years. It was like a few months. Wes Kenny had said, how about, cause this was uh, January. How about through the summer? I was like, yes. <laughs> greatest summer gig ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, so I have to show you this picture and this will tie into Michael Damien's question for you. So we have some some very impressive hair in yeah. this era. Yes, so my, uh, Michael Michael's... and I were in direct competition for sure. <laughs> and that's what his question was. He said, who won the competition for biggest, tallest hair? Who won? I think I won for largest shoulder pads and he won the <laughs> hair competition. <laughs> I used to yell hike when I walked on set. They were so large. I don't even know why I thought that was attractive. And uh, my nickname in the beginning was shoulders. So January 25th is the 40th anniversary of your first episode. What do we see on that day on YNR? What, how, does it, how does the show commemorate that? Uh, Lauren is um, being given a Lifetime Achievement Award for uh, fashion, leadership in fashion. And uh, I just found out actually, that there's a Fenmore's in Nashville where I really live. So I said to everybody, I'm available for remotes. Um, and so she's being um, honored and she comes in and her family and her dearest friends are there to watch her accept this award. And um, sorry, we have a little visitor. I, I love it. Hi. Um, and, and everyone comes and sits down and uh, we, there is a surprise element uh, that happens and that's how they get uh, Lauren to start talking about her life. And I know there's gonna be clips because the show loves showing some of those old clips. I don't know what you've seen yet, but what, do you, what goes through your head when you see those clips? Not just because of the hair and the shoulder pads, but also those stories back then and there's such history with this character. There's so much history. Um, the thing that, that blows my mind the most is how I don't remember doing things. <laughs> so I'm watching along with the with the audience too, going, I wonder what I'm going to do next. I, I mean, honestly, there's just so much I don't don't remember, and it's so cool to to visit those years and those storylines, and it sort of kind of um, reinvigorated me as an actress as to why I love to do what I do. Yeah. And I know that sounds strange because I've been doing it for 45 years, starting on Days of Our Lives when I was 14, but yeah. um, watching everything and doing that episode really kind of shifted me personally. Yeah, I love it. Um, so I, I'm sure you hear from people like me and fans, their favorite storylines over the years. Do you have one or do you have like something that just comes to mind first when you're asked that question, what's your favorite? Um, I, I loved the relationship between Paul and Lauren when they wrote that and, and Mary always, you know, disapproving of me, but right. I would say the last 17, well, it's been longer than 17 years because they married, uh, Lauren and Michael 17 years ago, but, 
Wow. The buildup and the storyline with Greg Rickard and how we had to hide our emotions and that and the, the through the proposal and the wedding and I mean, all of it. Uh, and it was beautiful being able to watch all those scenes after the, you know, the first years of our marriage as well. But I thought that was just so beautifully crafted. I remember when they first started pairing Lauren with Michael and I thought, oh, that's they're, they both had such histories and it really worked. Um, why do you think those characters have worked back then and they still work to this day? That marriage is still pretty solid. I think it's because uh, both characters are unafraid to do whatever it takes to protect our family. And we're not afraid to be bad. <laughs> we've been, and, we've, right. and, and what I love about our TV family is we're all, if you think about it, kind of the, the rogue bad characters. We put the fun and dysfunction, we like to say. And we've all, I think we've all killed people and gotten away with it. <laughs> so I used to give a Christmas party every year for the storyline called the Grifter's Christmas. And that's what we are. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. All right, so, and you're right, those characters have gone through everything, but is there anything you have not done as Lauren that you would like to, or has that bucket list been checked off long ago? That's a great question. I'm just not sure um, if there's, you know, besides doing major concerts and, you know, I used to say that a year without duct tape was not a very good year <laughs> for me. Yeah. Duct tape free for like a lot of years. Well, I love all the memories. And I can't wait to see what they show on this episode because it'll be a walk that memory lane for all the viewers too. So thank you, Tracy. And congratulations. This has been a good run for you. Thank you. So yeah, not bad. Not a bad not, gig. Not too shabby. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. You guys watch Young and the Restless every weekday on CBS.